Welcome to Epilogue Podcast, the show where we discuss some stuff that happened on a different show ages ago which nobody really cares about anymore. Hi, I'm Port Ponky. And I'm LeBlanc. Today we are discussing Deep Space Nine, Season 4, Episode 8, Little Green Men. Quark and Chums have a wacky, zany adventure on mid-20th century Earth. I assume you found this episode hilarious? I can't even tell whether you're being sarcastic, but I found this funny. No, I'm kind of half sarcastic. I thought it was funny, too. I wouldn't say it was drop-down hilarious. Drop-down hilarious? That's not a phrase. Let's make it one. Okay, I wouldn't say it's dropped down hilarious, but it had plenty of laughs, I would say. Not laughs, but kind of like, I would inhale slightly faster. <laughs> okay, uh, phantom laughs? Yeah. But that's good, though. That means I find it funny, but not so funny I lose control of everything and drop down funny. What was it? Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Uh, Phantom laughs are better than what we got before in previous Ferengi comedy attempts. Well, in terms of comedy attempts, this episode trumps everything that came before it, which isn't much of an achievement. Oh, it's still some sort of achievement. Well, I'm not saying it's bad, it's just that the bar was so low that <laughs> it was inevitably going to. Even if it, every joke fell flat, it would probably still be funnier than any previous Deep Space Nine episode. <laughs> so they would have to eventually, just by pure chance, do better. Yes, but I think it did quite well. What parts worked especially well for you? Ooh, um, the smoking I found funny. Not the comments on it, but just how much smoking there was. I like that a lot, too. There's so much smoking, as there should be. Yeah, that's what the sort of uh, B-movie sci-fi stuff was like. It's, in fact, that's what like a lot of 50s movies are like. Rampant smoking everywhere. And it sticks out so much when you put that in a show that exists now. Oh, wow, yeah, people used to smoke all the time it's odd in this episode as when placed um next to these characters but it's not odd for the time it's trying to mirror they they were a bit silly with it no not really i liked it when he gets two cigarettes to light both of them one for his uh gf one for his dame yes in terms of dialogue, um, pretty much a lot of the Ferengi stuff was pretty witty. Uh, um, when they're going to invade Cleveland, <laughs> it was good. After hearing so much of the Ferengi language in this episode, now I don't understand why a lot of uh, Klingon language doesn't translate, but then a lot of Frangie's everything in Frangi does? Well, okay. Okay, right. You've just hit upon the thorn in this episode. It's one of these episodes that comes up all the time because it establishes things about the canon which are very shaky, specifically to do with the Universal Translator. So that is now a device in their ears that works both ways. Yeah, I didn't like that aspect. They had to do something. Um, although I don't, I don't know if they could have done something better, but what they did, it raises a lot of questions if you take this far too seriously, which we do, of course. You have to do a lot of hand-waving to make this make sense absolutely you have to do tons <laughs> how does it even translate it to human 
I was also disappointed that the translator was just on the fritz. I thought the problem was that English had changed so much that what they were speaking was considered a dead language and the, the translator didn't even understand what was being said, that English has changed so much. It's uh, not recognizable. No, the translator can adapt to new languages very quickly. Oh, right. It learned that language when those people came on the station. That is hopelessly vague, but maybe you know what I'm talking about. Um, the scare... Screen. Screen, yes. And the episode is called... No, I don't know either. Uh... <laughs> Season 2. Episode 10, Sanctuary. There are plenty of other instances in Next Gen where the translator has to learn stuff. Or there's a famous episode, uh, Darmok, where it can't translate certain languages. So it's been established that it, it's completely adaptable. And That's now, fair. Now apparently it translates to other people's ears if you reset it. I like that it's sophisticated enough to translate something new. I don't like the transference. I don't even know how that, how that works. They had to hand wave over it. I mean, we're nitpicking this, but then we're totally fine that there was some sort of disruption and then they were thrown back in time. Well, yeah. That's what happens when you smuggle chemocyte at warp 9 point whatever. In terms of the time travel, I have a rather large nitpick with that as well. Go ahead. Okay, so... And there's something in the episode that makes it especially bad, which I'll talk about first. Where Nog notes that Gabriel Bell looks a lot like Cisco. Right. So that was a nice little uh, hook back to the previous episode. R reminds you about time travel. So they go back to the past and they crash in Roswell in 1947. And in goofy terms, that turns out to be the Roswell incident. Yes, I'm with you. But that has already happened. So, okay. Normally, when they go back in the past, they don't want to change the future because that will mess things up. Here they go back into the past and create events that already happened. They could have coincided with the Roswell incident. Well, that's a very lucky break. I think it's just that the timeline suddenly got deterministic for this episode. Well, it is neat thinking Quark and Chums impacted our timeline. Oh, Roswell, that's a thing I know. Maybe it was Quark. But I'm with you in that it should re they should stay consistent with how they deal with time travel episodes, and this one doesn't. Wait, so you're saying because it's all real, we're living in the timeline they created in this episode? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. It does? As long as they never mentioned the Roswell incident before this event on Star Trek, then yes, it makes sense. Oh, also assuming it's all real, which is probably the uh, larger pill to swallow. Only Odo could swallow that pill. Well, that wouldn't be difficult for him to swallow anything. Right. He can turn his face into a dog's face. <laughs> Why does he know what a dog is? He, um... Okay, there's actually a good explanation for this. We've seen in previous episodes that O'Brien lends him Earth Detective novels. Ah. Uh, so undoubtedly he would know what a dog is from those novels, assuming a dog shows up at some point, which isn't too hard to imagine. No, it's not. But I love the idea of Odo reading the word dog, not knowing what that is and just imagining something. Presumably he'd have to look it up or have a tr translation notes or something. Actually, that would make reading an alien book really annoying. 
constantly have to go to the computer and say, okay, what what is a dog? <laughs> it would be nonstop uh, footnotes. Be like House of Leaves. I, I've never actually read House of Leaves, so I don't know if that's an accurate comparison. I was going to go with uh, David Foster Wallace, but I've never actually read his books. I've okay. just heard. <laughs> Let's stop have... citing stuff okay. we have no idea about. Yeah, probably a good idea. There's one bit of this episode I really didn't like. Can you guess? Is it the sexual coercion? Yes. Something I've complained about before, but uh, tricking a woman into feeling you up, essentially, is really gross. Yes, it really is. And I wish they would stop playing it for laughs. Like, ha ha. Look at those awful Ferengi. Oh, no, but that's that's not just like socially awkwardly awful. That's criminally awful. It does, It's not playful, so stop doing it, please. He said to a show that's been over for a long time. Yes, um, you may have to sit through something, at least that bad in the future, because they... They never ease off on that. I mean, season four, you'd think that it would be something they would get sick or bored of or finally realize, oh, hang on, this is astonishingly awful. (laughs) But no, you're in it for the long haul. Season four would have been the perfect time to distance themselves from that uh, trait, I guess. I don't know. Let's talk about the rule of acquisition that came up, because that's not about gross stuff. Oh, actually, it is kind of gross. Okay, uh, the rule was 203. New customers are like razor-toothed gree worms. They can be succulent, but sometimes they bite back. So if you use a simile, is it a good simile if you then have to completely explain it? Always. That simile was like a house on fire. It, you don't want to live in it. But you look at it from afar, sort of rubbernecking. Does that, not, does that make any sense? He was moving like a bat out of hell. He was moving quickly from a place he didn't want to be. <laughs> Why are they razor tooth gree worms? Uh, those are more savory than the uh, vanilla gree worms. Okay, I can't actually comment on how Ferengi would name things, because who knows. So I think this rule is definitely ready for improvement. <laughs> do, you, do you have an idea for how to improve it? If not, Delete? get one. Uh, do, or just, just remove it? Yeah. No. Oh, what was your idea? Um... There's nothing in there about profit. How am I supposed to interpret this? So what is good but sometimes is bad? Something very basic. Uh, Rose? What? Smells nice, looks nice, has thorns. Tastes disgusting. Just add some salt. (laughs) Oh, okay. Oh, you wanted a food item? No, not not food. Uh, just anything. Like, what's the most basic thing which is usually really good but can be really bad? Uh, bread. <laughs> Why is it always food? I, I don't know where you're going with this. No, just anything. But why does it have to be new customers? Because old customers always do <laughs> the best thing for your business. That is so not true. This completely depends on what you are selling. If it's, I don't know, medication that people need, and I imagine if Frangie would sell that rather than give it away, then um, new customers probably wouldn't be very good because they might not need it, whereas people who have been on it for a long time will definitely want more. (laughs) But if it's something uh, that you just do once, like tattoo parlor then 
yeah, you're probably not going to, you're probably primarily going to deal with new customers. This rule is badly phrased and it's not very enlightening. I think what it's getting at is that um, you won't always extract profit from a new customer. Uh, and sometimes it may end up badly for you. Not just losing the sale, but they'll punch you in the face. So it's basically saying new customers can be good or bad. Yeah. That seems like a tautology. I mean, obviously they can be good or bad. That's all the possible states of things. Well, new customers are enticing because they're new. You don't have them yet, but you have to be careful because it could be a trap. A trap? What? Oh, wait, that could be misinterpreted. All this tells you is that new customers definitely aren't only good or only bad. Shouldn't you know that? Yes, same with old customers. It's the most basic form of interaction with other living sapient beings. They might not be entirely one thing or the other. But they can't say it like that because that sounds stupid. <laughs> yes. They Let's have see. to uh, dress it up. Rule of acquisition two or three. Other life is sometimes a thing or a different other kind of thing. They could have said something more like, don't turn your back on a new customer. So don't be afraid of being bitten. It's going to happen. I don't think they're going to bite you. That If you say don't turn your back on someone, that means be wary, doesn't it? Not they're uh, gonna I, eat thought, you. I thought of it as reject them. So Oh god. Yes, okay. Don't let your guard down around those dangerous new customers. Sometimes they bite back. <laughs> I guess after this short discussion I can sympathize with why they maybe didn't come out with a home run on this one. It's tough. It is. I can see what they're trying to get at, but I can't see a good way of phrasing it. It should be about not letting the profit potential lower your guard or something. Then that doesn't that that's always true. Not just for new customers. Yeah, but when faced with new customers, the the latinum shines brightest. Oh, that was horrible. But <laughs> it's easier to get wrapped up in the idea of profit in the face of new customers. Well, that's not true. You could have a huge sale with an old customer. This doesn't make sense. Oh, hang on. You hit on something there, though. You could be. You could say something like, don't get blinded by the, the uh, sparkle of platinum. As in, don't let, it, don't let it go to your head. Yeah. And then just... Add on the end, brackets, relating to new customers. <laughs> it's difficult because pretty much anything you say about new customers, you could say about any customer. Yeah, I, but I think it's the potential thing, how this is a new revenue stream. You have your old customers and you have your steady profit from them. And then you have this new customer and you think, oh, this is going to increase my margins. So it's... Better the enemy you know than the enemy you don't. Latinum. Yeah. Okay. Well, now we've solved that. Uh, do you have a quote? All I ask is a tall ship and a load of contraband to fill her with. Now, by any chance did you pick this because it slightly annoys you? <laughs> Why do you say that? Because he's quoting an Earth uh, thing. Yeah. Or paraphrasing, I should say. Not that Quark can never quote an Earth thing, but that really sounds like a reference. It sticks out. When you hear that, you think, oh, that's not Quark. He's, he's alluding to something. He's going through the looking glass of comments. Maybe he picked up Nog's pad and saw the quote. Well, you're kind of right. 
because this phrase, or the original phrase, all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by, is has already appeared on the show in a place where Quark can see it. Wait, it has? Has it? I don't know. I'm asking you. Hold on. Okay, maybe not. I'm mining the wiki as we talk. But <laughs> it's the... I don't know what episode this was of. It probably hasn't been in it. There was about three minutes of intense wiki research here which I've cut out. As it turns out, the phrase appears in Season 3, Episode 21, The Dies Cast. Yes, it has, it has, it has. I figured it out. Can you elaborate? It's the dedication plaque on the Defiant. Has it written down? Oh. <laughs> so, Quark could have read it, and then... Ah. Well, there you go. Amazing. So Quark read it, and then he paraphrased it. 100% plausible, unlike Through the Looking Glass. <laughs> yes. He fills his ship immediately with contraband. It seems a bit obvious for Quark. Yeah, well, but sometimes you gotta hide in plain sight. No, no you don't. Oh, okay. That's not how that works? You don't have to do blindingly obvious crimes? Well, hiding in plain sight is like razor tooth gree worms. <laughs> I believe, I believe we've talked enough about this silly episode. Yeah, it's silly, but it was mostly fun, and Area 52 stuff is pretty irresistible for sci-fi. I'm surprised those two helper guys, uh, Garland and Carlson, I'm thinking, uh, didn't ask to go with them, because they're dead. Yeah. There's no way they will be uh, receiving a tiny slap on the wrist. Yeah, they're, they're just 100% dead. I'm very 100%. surprised. Yes, I'm so surprised they didn't say, please take us with you so we don't die. Uh, I gotta go. Oh, well. They seemed happy to stay there and face probably the death penalty, <laughs> I imagine. They didn't think that one through. Not really. In fact, the base security was pretty pants. Whatever, it's a comedy episode. We can nitpick it to bits and pieces because it's full of silly stuff. Um, it was good enough. We should just go on to the next episode content rather than bitter. Fine. I won't mention how I hated the long hold on the, cal on the calendar just in case we can't figure out the obvious that they travel back in time. I won't mention that. Um, no, it was just another 47 reference. <laughs> okay, look. Next episode. Yes. Goodbye. <laughs>